Hello and welcome to episode 48 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. Is that it? It looks like we're Nick jones list again. Oh man. Busy weekend. So our third host, Nick, couldn't join us today. So with him gone, I feel that we shouldn't stick to the normal format. Uh, so there will be no top five. There's going to be no treasure hunting. Uh, to reveal uh, just some um, pretty funny stories. Yeah, and it's funny because we both had the same thought about treasure hunting. Uh, I didn't tell him we weren't going to do treasure hunting. To uh, tell Brandon that, and he's like, "You got any treasure?" And I was like, "Yeah, but it's kind of weird, like hitting each other when there's not an audience." <laughs> yeah, just in an empty room, hitting each other in the butthole or in the nutsack. It's it's like not the same. It's not the same <laughs> without Nick's laughter to shadow it. <laughs> because it, without that laugh, it's just like awkward. And you're like, okay, you just hit me in the butt. Let's just sit down and talk about video games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we've got quite a few stories to go over with you today. We've uh, handpicked out some funny ones. Uh, the first, what we're going to go into is my ha high school antics with my then girlfriend, now wife. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this on the podcast before, but uh, I got her pregnant when we were juniors, I believe, at the end of our junior year uh, during springtime, spring break, I think was it when it was. Mom thinks it was prom, but it wasn't. Um, it was before prom. <laughs> no, it was after it. It wasn't spring break before prom? I don't know, was it? Prom was in like April, May. Yeah, yeah, probably probably before um in the sunrise mall parking lot nope <laughs> yeah we got caught there um we were the van was parked like behind this dumpster in a parking space for like two hours and we were young and in love and going at it and all of a sudden security guards knocked on the window and i was like oh man but this is during school hours too so we're cutting and not the best example but they didn't press charges. They asked her like four times if she was being raped and if I was over 18 or whatever, but I wasn't. So they're security guards and not real cops? Yeah. So you could have just driven away and they wouldn't have been able to do anything? Probably, <laughs> but they were in uniform and I didn't know about that back then. Yeah, but you had a bunch of mob blarts. Paul yeah, blarts. Paul, Paul blarts, <laughs> yeah. Just like, I mean, they were like looking in the van like for... For like, like 15 minutes. Yeah, good. Not yeah. Curves. <laughs> Uh, so she became pregnant and I, around this time I would started cutting school quite regularly, like going to McDonald's or going to the mall. And I thought you were the worst for doing that because <laughs> we had a few of the same classes like, where the fuck is he this time? And it was, uh, it was like I was doing something bad and it was like a fun to like, just go, there would be even days where I just go lay in the van for the whole day and not do anything <laughs> because it was so relaxing. But, uh, so I got a bunch of cut marks on my attendance record, and for football, I had to get an attendance check. Got an attendance check, and there were, like, so many cut marks, and I was like, oh, man, what's going on here? Okay, I'll, I'll get these cleared up. I'll go ask my teachers to excuse them. Well, all of a sudden, during my third period class in English, I was sitting down and getting ready to learn about some, some uh, books. Weren't you guys in the library? No, we were in. I was in the classroom, huh. and all of a sudden, Vanessa Boardman, uh, I think it was her or someone who I didn't really know, said, "Brad, your mom's looking for you." And I was like, "How does she know who my mom is?" And I, I peeked outside the classroom, and she was one classroom down on a mission, looking in the classroom, trying to find me. And I wasn't in that classroom; I was in the next one. I was like, "Oh shit!" So I walk out there, and I'm like hey what's going on and she's like what's up with this fucking 20 cuts on your attendance record and i was like no i didn't really do it and then she face to face came up to me <laughs> do you want me to knee you in the nuts right here in front of everyone <laughs> <laughs> and i was like oh man she's serious and so she took me aside and she was like you just need to tell me the truth. Did you do it or didn't you? And I said, well, you see this whole absence day here? 
That's the day I spent in the van just sitting there because I was sick and you wouldn't let me stay home. So I tried to turn her back on her. Oh. And so she was all upset and went to the principal's office, you know, mortified at everybody seeing me walk around with my mom all pissed off. Ended up having to serve at Saturday school. And it sucked because I missed the first day that Ash went into the Elite Four. Ah, that's what you get. Remember that when he used Krabby and then it evolved to a Kingler? I was in Saturday school. I came home and you're like, Krabby evolved into a Kingler. And I was like, oh, I missed it. <laughs> I was heck of mad. What was really more mortifying is when my mom found out that Karen was pregnant. And she decided to go confront her parents. Like it was their fault. <laughs> you know, the nicest people on the earth, and she's going to go over there and go mom on them. Go Jenny Red on them. She's going to go street <laughs> on them. She's like, ooh, I haven't done this in a long time. I'm, I'm excited. So we get over there to Karen's house, just so intimidated by them, by her parents. Of course they know by now. And did you know that at her time, um, her dad had a loaded gun? No. Oh. <laughs> what, did he have a Magnum? <laughs> yeah, it was a Magnum. It was a big gun. But we sat down in the living room. Me, my mom, Dan, and Judy. Did um, she call ahead of time? And no. No, she didn't call ahead of time. She just went over there full force. Uh, like a, a red hurricane that she is. I wonder what happened if they weren't home. <clears throat> oh, that's what I was hoping. I was like, don't answer the door. So Karen didn't even get to sit in the room with us, so I just felt even more intimidated. What? Who made that decision? I don't think she was there. Uh, um, so we're sitting down, and the first thing out of my mom's mouth is, you know, Bradley was raised Catholic. So did they know she was pregnant at this time? Yes, they did. How did they find out Karen told them? Yeah. And I was like, Catholic? I Why am I Catholic? I guess because we were baptized? I I don't know, but we were baptized when we were babies, but we certainly were far from raised Catholic. You know, we've always had an interest in God and everything. So she's like, he was raised Catholic. And I was just sitting there like, okay, Mom, Karen just started talking to me and, and teaching me about Christianity. I don't want you to fuck things up with these people <laughs> by telling them I'm Catholic because I didn't know if like Christians hated Catholics or whatever. So I was like, just don't do that. And so they started going on like, well, is he going to get a job to support the baby? And I started nodding my head yes, and my mom was like, no. <laughs> what? What was she expecting? Because it would mess with... Um, her Section little, eight. Little, little, little <laughs> if I got a job. And you know, come to find out, all these years later, it w really wouldn't have messed with it. Yeah. Because I remember when I got the job at Kmart, it did nothing. It didn't raise her rent at all. Yeah. So that was crazy too, and it was just a real uncomfortable feeling when my mom was just like, "No, he's not getting a job." What did they say? Dan said, well, I feel like he needs to get a job. And I was like, yeah, Mom, why don't you just let me get a job? <laughs> so is that why you got the job at Kmart? Yeah. Do you remember I, I got the job at Kmart? No. To buy Pokemon cards? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why I told Mom I, why I wanted the job, but I just remember wanting to always buy Pokemon cards. And the thing is, I, I think I was out of Pokemon cards when I got my first paycheck. Like, I didn't even buy any. Uh, the first thing I bought was ACDC Back in Black CD and uh, a Piccolo action figure. No, I, I was walking down the toy, toy aisle a few um, days after I started working. I saw a Piccolo toy and a Vegeta, Vegito toy for um, drag, from Dragon Ball. And I was like, I'm hiding these. So that's what <laughs> I did. I hid those two figures and I waited until I got paid. I think two weeks later, and I got that, those two, and then the Back in Black CD, and then um, I think I had like 180 bucks left after that. Yeah, and then you like quit, 
like all of a sudden on was it Christmas? Eve well, or? I think I st- I got the um, job in September of two thousand nineteen ninety nine, and that was heck of cool. I really liked working at Kmart, uh, except I when I had to work Thanksgiving, it was the worst experience of my life, my job career. Um, horrible shoppers that was the first day that you had to work eight hours too yeah and i didn't get my last break and the people were buying clothes left and right so i had to throw all the hangers underneath the the um checkout stand and my feet was i was like knee deep in hangers no one came to take the hangers away endless lines rude people being mad because there's not enough check stands open because the smart people called in sick. <laughs> so then uh, we both worked uh, Thanksgiving. I think I, I worked the morning shift. Yeah. So then when Christmas Eve came around, you worked the morning shift. I was going to go in later. And then so you came home and said, remember Thanksgiving? I said, yeah. <laughs> and you said, it's nothing like that. It's ten times worse. I remember that. So the I, lines were like wrapped around the aisles and everything. So I uh, called up Roberta, the manager there. I think that was her name. Who was, was it Debbie who was a mean lady? Yeah, she was a bitch. Yeah. So I called Roberta and I said, hey, Roberta, uh, I'm I'm not going to work anymore. I qu- I'm going to quit. And she said, okay. I said, is there anything I need to do? She said, well, you need to give your two weeks notice and then finish out your two weeks. <laughs> and I said, I'm not, no, um, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I've already got another job lined up, which I didn't. And she's like, well, you can never work in another Kmart ever again. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> like, okay. And then going, I was like so mortified going in to pick up my last paycheck like the following week. But they're like, all right, here you go. Back to, I guess, Dan. Um, so he said, you should get a job. Mom's saying no. You got, we got to Kmart. What else happened during that conversation? That's really the only thing I remember because I blocked out most of it. What about when Dan asked if you had anything to say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Judy asked it. She was like, yeah. well, Brad, do you have anything to say? And I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to say. You don't remember the response to that? No. Uh, I don't. I remember the whole time when um, we found out mom was on her tirade and Matt, how old was he at the time? Probably around 12, 11 or 12. He was like, I'm going to be an uncle. Like he was all excited and happy. And I was like, how can you be so happy in this time of chaos? He kept saying it and I was like, shut up. <laughs> Heck of disappointed. <laughs> So when was the last time you've been fishing? I went last year with mom. And really? Ranch and Uncle Ron. At Gibson Ranch. Oh. Didn't catch anything. Did they have fish there? Nope. Didn't catch anything. So, um, remember, I don't think we were seven or eight. Uncle Sam used to take us fishing. Like, we'd go to his camp, what, house camper. He lived on someone's property. That's right. And it, it was his, and he didn't he have a roommate, Tony, or something? Yeah. And they worked at the wood mill or something. Yeah. And so they had this camper we were never allowed to go into. Um, we found out why uh, a few months later, but he'd take us camping across the street off of Northgate. I think it's called the East Levy or something by, what's that park there? Crystal Park? Discovery. Dis- oh, there's Crystal. Yeah, there's some campground. I thought, cause yeah. like, that's where Jason lives. So, we go to the East Levy, fight through the, it wasn't even woods, it was just brush down, going down a slope, black widows everywhere, spider nests. And the, the thing that scared us the most is our mom took us and we saw like voodoo dolls hanging in the tree. Yeah. And she was like, there's Satanists who live around here <laughs> who practice Satanism. Yeah. And so she took us to this little like runoff, it was like a sewage runoff. They had like upside down grocery carts in it. They had like, we swore it was toxic waste barrels and all sorts of gross stuff in this little pond. Don't know why she wanted to go here, but we'd uh, cast out and we'd never catch anything. So I think one time 
we actually we meant to cast out, but it just went straight down by the where the water first met the land bank by the bank, and like we started catching fish. It like started biting the worm. I was like, oh, this is where all the fish are. So we'd reel up the fish, and the fish had warts on it. It was heck of gross. <clears throat> and then we came to realize we didn't even need worms. We just dip our hook in there. <laughs> And they just bite onto the hook. Stupid fish. Probably because they had warts. They wanted to die. But there were like warts all over their body. And yeah, we wouldn't touch the fish. We'd lay it on the ground while it was flopping, step on it, and then yank the hook out. Yeah. And then just kick it back into the water. Yeah. We did that about 20 times. We'd probably catch the same fish like five times. And then one time I pulled a fish up and it, it was wart free. And I, we were going to, I wanted to take it home to eat. But you just tossed it back in the water. You didn't want to eat those fish. <laughs> I, I wanted to eat that one. And then I was like, that one was good. And I was like, oh, it was. Oh, man. So we went fishing there a couple of times with the uh, Satanists and the toxic waste. And then we heard that our uncle was going to go off to jail. Uh, probably something drug-related or alcohol-related, stripping copper or something. Remember that when he used to bring the bags of copper up to our apartment? Yeah, because you get more if it's stripped. And uh, we, we used to do it before school and strip the copper. So uh, stripping the copper is he would find this copper, supposedly, from buildings, uh, yank it all down. Of course, it's still... Uh, in case, in case yeah. yeah, of the with the rubber tubing or whatever it is, and he'd have to he'd bring bags and bags of it up, and we'd have to uh, remove the rubber from it. And we I don't think we ever got anything for it. We never got a cut. I'm sure our mom did. Yeah, so we'd have to strip this copper, and somehow he landed up in jail. And so we had to go clean out his camper, and our mom brought us over to go clean the camper out, and it was just filled with porn like magazines and why, why did you let us in there why did you let us do a bunch of things <laughs> <laughs> and we we're only eight like young eight or nine i didn't know what the heck was going on on those magazines and it was like i just saw nothing but blonde hair and like red i didn't know what my brain couldn't comprehend what was on those magazines and so i just like She's like, okay, go throw these away. Okay, go throw these away. And I just felt like dirty. Yeah. It's disgusting. So let's go ahead and go talk about some funny stories that you have with Domino's. Oh, man. Domino's yeah. was a great job. Your second job, right? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I started it like, I think a year in college. Uh, I met this guy named Jeremy, real cool guy. He was like, hey, you want to come work at Domino's? We need a driver. I was like, oh, I could drive, you know. But I guess they needed an inside person. So I started working on the inside. And the guy who ran that place, Walt, we've talked about before, he was from, he was in the Navy. He was military and everything had to be done a certain way. If your pizza sucked, like, you had to learn how to make the, slap out a pizza dough from a little round ball and put it together. If it came out of the oven and he didn't like it, he'd throw it away and say, make a new one. That's harsh. Oh, man. I remember we need to get Matt on here because he worked there too, our brother. And eventually, I guess I was good enough to get uh, promoted to... No, I didn't even get promoted yet. He said, well, we need you over at the Mather Field store. The first store I worked... For, okay, first of all, I was in Del Paso Heights with, with Mom. Domino's was a good 15, 20 minute drive from there. Yeah. Uh, up in North Highland. Okay. It's off of Antelope and uh, oh, Watt. So from there, he said, we need you to go work in Mather. So that was a 30 to 40 minute drive from Mom's house. Probably about a 30 minute drive up in Rancho Cordova. And I don't know why I agreed to do this, maybe because gas was cheap, but I was like, all right, so that was a whole new experience. You know, working in North Highlands, you know, you you have... Middle class? Kind of, yeah. The uh, drivers were a little scummy, but that's okay. But the drivers in... Uh, Rancho. Rancho? 
oh, it was like little Armenia there. All the drivers are Armenian. I, I nothing. This group of Armenians is quick. I mean, I hope not. Or I hope all Armenians are not this way. But from what I could, from what I've experienced, they all act the way that they did. Tight knit. Um, loved their. Uh, the one of them loved his spices so much he wouldn't bathe. He just throw spices on, <laughs> and it, it wasn't cologne. It wasn't aftershave. It wasn't brute. It was just like a spice that he would just rub on himself, and it made him smell horrible. Of course, they didn't want a, a white guy coming and telling him what to do. Uh, the people that worked there, the uh, this is how it worked. Inside people take care of the pizzas, send the delivery drivers out to tell, okay, driver A, you go here, driver B, you go here. Uh, that's how it's usually ran in all dominoes. The drivers would do the dishes at the end of the night. They would mop, they would sweep, um, and, you know, go about their, their night. In little Armenia, the drivers had the, the lay of the land uh so they they didn't need a blue shirt coming in i wore i got a blue shirt for it was assistant manager for going to rancho and i'd tell them okay caro you go here manuk you go here rafik you go here arthur you go here alex you go here they weren't having it they would take two or three um deliveries at a time and just uh, run off with them and say, I'm going here, here, and here, put it in the computer. And I called Walt and I said, these guys are unruly. They're not listening to me. He's like, well, you have to put your foot down. So the next night, I put my foot down, and I got into a fight with one of the drivers, the one who wore the spices, Caro. And he kept saying, this is bullshit, man. This is bullshit. You can't tell me what to do. So I called Walt. I said, Walt, he, he's not listening. He's like, Give me, give me a half hour. He lives in Lincoln. He drove from Lincoln to Matherfield, uh, about an hour drive and a half hour, fired him right on the spot. <laughs> Take a tight. Yeah, so he was like, this guy, he tells you what to do. If you don't listen to him, expect to leave. So when I, you know, I, when I started training over in Mather with, um, who, Rebecca, Becca uh, was the opener there. And she was doing the dishes. I said, why are you doing the dishes? This is a driver's job. She's like, no, he doesn't do it because it's women's work. So he ended up doing the dishes when I worked there. I said, Arthur, go do your dishes. Okay, okay. And it's funny, he he had on an apron doing the dishes, and the other drivers came in. They started heck of laughing at him. Like, oh, look, it's the woman doing the work. Because I wasn't doing the dishes. I was an inside guy. If I was a driver... I would have no problem doing the dishes. Uh, Did so, you ever contaminate a pizza? What do you mean? Like put on the wrong ingredient? No, I mean like willfully do something bad to it to make it gross. Once, we'll get to that. Uh, so around a few months later, this new guy, well, he wasn't new. He was like the night shift guy, started coming in earlier and earlier. Name, oh, I want to say his name, huh? You Barris? Yeah. You go up here. I don't care. Uh, named Barris, and he was, we'd always clash because he would have the driver's back because he was also Armenian, and I was like the white devil trying to m mix things up. I wasn't trying to mix things up, I was just trying to make him right and do it per domino standard because I was actually thinking of maybe opening a Domino's franchise at one point. I can't remember what Barris did one time, but he made me so mad. I took one of the heavy cast iron trays and just threw it against the wall. And he got hecka scared and ran out. He's like, I'm leaving, man. You could close. I'm leaving. Because at this point in time, uh, I was opening up the North Island store. for. I'd get there at 10, start making the sauce, prepping the dough, uh, getting out all the ingredients. We'd open at 11. I'd work 11 to 5 there or 10 to 5 there clock out go to rancho and work from 6 to 1 or 2 sometimes and close that store 
he has kept doing things, talk, you know, talking about not behind my back. He talked to my face, but in Armenian language, and um, laugh with other drivers. So one time he called me up one night and said, "Ara," that means hey or guy or something. I need a white sauce chicken pizza for me and my friends. Can you make it for me? Now, when you work at Domino's, you get heavily discounted pizza. I believe we got like one pizza, a large was like seven bucks, and a medium was five. But you would have to come in and make it yourself. So him asking me to make it, I said, sure. Usually I'd put up a protest like, you come make it. But I devised a plan. So he wanted a white sauce chicken pizza with onions, green peppers, olives, mushrooms. I gave him, he said, the best pizza of his life. <laughs> now, at this point in time, I had been working about 10 hours, no, m more like 12. Uh, like I said, working out of the other store and then coming to the other one. No and shower in between. No, no shower because it took an hour to drive from one store to the other. Traffic, 5 o'clock traffic, sweaty, hot summer. Um, so I added some special ingredients to his pizza. Only time I ever mess with someone's food. What'd you do to it? Um, like I said, I was sweaty, so I put my hands on my pants and burned my balls. Got it all nice and sweaty. Juicified. Yeah, so I slapped out the pizza dough with those sweaty hands. <laughs> plucked a few uh, pubic hairs, some ball hair, and mashed them into the dough. Topped it with the ingredients, baked it for seven minutes, and it was, he said, the best pizza he ever had. That's heck of funny. Remember when me and Josh came up there with the orange skin? Oh, hat? man, at the North Highland store. That was, like, so dumb. Uh, I was sitting there working. Why did we buy those ski masks to begin with for the... Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so Josh got this brilliant idea to buy ski masks to hide our identity for for devious acts that we'll go into on another show. Uh, and he also wanted to make this uh, DVD flirting with disaster. He wanted to do a, jack, a jackass ripoff. And we we got in a few segments. Like uh, he had the ski mask on and I was driving in the Target parking lot and he just jumped on the hood of the car while, I don't know who was filming. Were you there? No one filmed. <laughs> <laughs> that was just him being crazy. So, and then we got pulled over by the um, cops. It was in the par parking lot, and then they were like, "What are you doing? This is stupid!" And then someone yelled across the parking lot, "There's a baby stuck in this car!" And then he was like, "You got to stop this!" and ran away. Oh, we hightailed it out of there. Yeah. But Brad and Josh show up to Domino's with these orange ski masks on. And I'm looking, and Josh is humping the glass window because <laughs> it was a huge window that you could see into the whole restaurant. And I don't know what you were doing. Maybe I was like peeking or something. And of course, customers are looking and seeing these two men with ski masks, like they're gonna try to rob the place. And I'm like, no, 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 they're just my friend. No, it's fine. They're not gonna do anything. <laughs> and I'm like, get the fuck out of here, <laughs> fucking weirdos. Remember mom, she said she uh, almost threw up when she looked in your car and found the orange ski mask. <laughs> I don't remember that. She's like, she. I was working at Western Dental at the time and she called me Brad. She called the Western Dental phone number. She was serious. Brad. Because you didn't have a cell phone at the time. No. Huh? Do you know why Brandon would have an, a ski mask in his car? <laughs> I was like, oh... Me and Josh bought those. We were going around Domino's and just playing with them and pretending to be robbers. And she was like, okay, I feel so relieved. That's funny. I wonder what she thought I was going to do with it. Robbery? I don't <laughs> know. So um, now we're going to take you down to the south part of Sacramento, back to the Bartholomews. You always seem to try to drag me here. Um for those of you who don't know the Bartholomews, we talked about them on earlier podcasts. They're our father's side of the family, who we've never, we've never, we've seen her father probably twice in our year. Uh, feel real, real awkward when we see him. But well, last the, time we saw him, we were what, five? Something like that, yeah. yeah. Over at Mr. Video. But we, 
the other the other part of the family besides him are real great people. They're like you know, uh, from Louisiana. They they like to have a good time. They like to party. A few of these stories that we're going to go over, they are racist, though we're taking their comments verbatim. Don't reflect that on us. We don't share their views or opinions. Uh, it just shows you how crazy they were. They, they look, it, you saying this just after I got done telling my tale of little Armenia and dominoes. Well, you're talking about just the click. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, the click. So, down off of 38th Avenue, uh, in South Sac. Off of what, Franklin? Uh, Franklin, I think. Uh, they, they own, they used to own two houses at the end of 38th Avenue, uh, one across the street from each other, when one house would be our grandma Nellie, our grandpa Joe, her kids who were, who were not in jail that were living with her at the time. Always our, interchangeable. Our uncles, yeah. On the other side of the street, there was our uncle Joey, his wife Barbara, Jojo, fill up his sons. Um, so they lived right next to each other, which was cool, because we could always go from one house to the other and, you know, eat food or whatever. On our grandma's Nellie side, her property butted up against Campbell's Soup. So that kind of gives you an idea. It, there was a huge field there. And on her property, she had this peach tree. And it was a white peach tree. It had the most delicious peaches that you'll ever find. And it was back by the gate that separated hers and the field from Campbell Soup. Yes. And so they, they would always fear that they would get people, transients, who would hop the fence and get into their property. So it w their property, where the peach tree was, was guarded by bear traps. And they always told, tell us, don't go over there. Over there in the high bush, there's bear traps. And we were scared to death that we were going to lose our leg. Uh, so let's take you to the other side of the house where Uncle Joey's house. It's kind of a rundown house. There's a huge bearskin rug on the wall that they killed uh, from a hunting expedition. Jojo killed it, huh? Yeah. He was so proud of that thing. Man. Uh, loaded shotguns laying around. Well, usually when you see bearskin rugs, they're on the floor. Yeah. This was tacked up on the side of the wall. Tacked up on the side of the wall. Uh, with a removable tongue. <laughs> yeah. Uh, loaded shotguns laying around. They had brute body splash laying around uh, to douse themselves in if a pretty lady came in or like the sheriff's department happened to show up. <laughs> uh, and it, I honestly don't know why. I guess because we begged our mom to stay over there. Why she let us stay over there? We thought it would be the funnest thing. Yeah. One night uh, we wanted to stay the night to go camping. And the next day, or were we going to hunting? Yeah, hunting. We were going to go hunting the next day, and so we had to stay there early in the morning. And we asked our Uncle Joey, what about an alarm clock? How are you going to wake up so early? And he pointed to his head and said, I have an alarm clock built in my head. It's right here. And we're like, oh. And he's like, okay, you guys are going to go to sleep now. We were laying in our cousin Philip's bed. Well, we don't know where he was. And he was like, don't you know the Lord's Prayer? And we were like, no. And then so he said, repeat after me. And we repeated after him, and I felt like I was praying for my life. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, like, freaky. Yeah, it was hecka scary. So let me tell you why. Um, there was, remember the goat in episode three, the goat incident? Well... We were laying in my our Uncle Joey's room. Same, same Uncle Joey. Same Uncle Joey. Down the of the goat. With the goat. Uh, laying in there in his room. And why did Mom let us go back over there? Probably because like five, six years passed. Uh -huh. And it's like, ah, it's water under the bridge. <laughs> no, the goat's not there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so we're laying there in the bed. And uh, I think we were like watching the news or something, talking about fishing uh, in his bedroom. And he's laying in there. And, and he's all like, Hey Brandon, why why don't you go look on under Philip's bed for a, a video called Sex Games? Is that what it was called? Yeah. Oh man. And then I was like, Oh, this is so weird. I hope Brandon doesn't find the tape. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that that at all. And then you went to go look for the tape, and uh, you came back and like, I can't find it. It's not there. 
he was like, oh, that's too bad. I was just going to teach you boys some things. And then he was like, Barbara, where's that tape at? Yeah, Barbara, where's the tape? I think he feared that me and Brandon were going to grow up gay because we didn't have a father. So he hopefully was just trying to be like... Or maybe because we didn't get have sex yet at the age of 11. <laughs> <laughs> so he um, he wanted to set make sure we were straight, set us straight. Um so thankfully the tape didn't come into play. We left. Uh, later that, that next weekend is when we stayed the night to go camping or hunting or whatever. And I was just like, this is so freaky. It's all dark. I've never been here when it was dark. And it was just like such a, a weird moment. Remember what we had for dinner that night? The night we stayed the night? No. Hamburger meat with cream and mushroom soup. That was heck of good. Yeah. Um, I keep trying to make that dish now, but Jamil is not having it. She has poor people food. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a few more bits of advice given to us from our Uncle Joey. He pulled me aside one day when we were walking across the street to go to his mom's house, Grandma Nellie's house. And he's go he got this serious tone, and he's like, I'm going to tell you something very important. Listen to this and don't forget it. And I was like, oh, no, what's he going to tell me? He said, whenever you get a chance at getting some pussy, do not turn it down. <laughs> That's like a serious. And he was so, like, dead serious. And I was like, okay. And I was like, only, like, 10 or 11. And then he he used to tell us when we were eating crawdads at crawdad parties. And I was like, what are these orange things in here with the crawdads? He's like, oh, yeah, that's that's the mama's egg. That makes your cock hard. And the last thing is that I could remember, Philip went to the um, the Vietnamese store to get some dried squid to eat. I don't know why. And my Uncle Joey said, you got that at the Chinaman shop, huh? <laughs> and he was like, yeah. And then he, Uncle Joey turned to us and said, boys, do you want a, do you want a piece of this? This is what pussy tastes like. <laughs> and I was just like... Uh, you lick that? And he was like, smell it. Smell yeah. it. He was like showing it up our nose. And, and we're like, oh. And like, my, my Andrew Barber is just sitting there like looking at him, like nothing wrong's going on. It was just a really awkward moment. And we used to, uh, we used to walk from there. We'd pick, we'd go to this Maple Street Elementary School to play, uh, off of 37th Wind Street over. And sometimes we'd, uh, see if our neighborhood friend Wendy was there and you know we'd go there and play and then one day Uncle Joey said so what you guys aren't having sex and we were like what no he's like what you guys should do is when you go down to that school you pick up Wendy and take her in the bathroom you have sex with her yeah and I was like oh and oh that was so horrible it was just like weird it was um so so we wake up that morning and go hunting uh went and bought some shells for the shotgun first time we ever shot shotguns with him and our uncle ron went to and we went like just shooting these for these little birds these, like, these little yellow and black birds whatever we could find well first we went dove hunting and he was like shoot the gun shoot the gun and we were like shooting their like grape vines. We were shooting the grapes because we couldn't hold the gun. They were so heavy. Yeah. And then once we got some dove, then we, he like, he just went shooting like birds on the side of the road, like, sitting on the, on a perch. He just shoot it and have the dog bear jump out and bring it back. Yeah. And so we, uh, found this raccoon skin on the side of the road and it was a freshly killed raccoon. And that w was hit by a car. That was hit by a car, and we we didn't get have any luck in shooting any birds or anything. So we we said, "Can we tell the rest of the family when we get back that we killed this raccoon?" He's like, "Sure, go ahead." And we were like, "Yeah." So we devised the story when, when we got back. We said, "Look at this raccoon we shot. We both shot it between the eyes with a shotgun at the same time. At the same time." And everyone's like, oh, okay. And we were like so proud of ourselves that they bought the story. And who was the, who was the, uh, his, which aunt 
bought the raccoon from us. I don't remember her name. But she bought the raccoon for 10 bucks, I believe, $5 each, and took it home and cooked it. She, I don't know if she thought it was freshly killed or if she knew it was roadkill. <laughs> I don't know if she really bought the story that we both were such marksmen that we could shoot a buckshot shotgun out at this running animal and hit it in between the eyes. And have its face not explode. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we got five bucks each for that raccoon we found. But you remember plucking those birds to make the stew? That was horrible. Yeah. I remember crying, not wanting to do it, because they had so many dang feathers. And we, like, gave up after, like, one and a half, and there were, like, 30 birds in that grocery bag. Yeah. <laughs> not only did you have to get the main feathers off, but these, these little black ones that you had to pluck off, too. Um, so let's go ahead and fast forward a few years. Um, let's say 20 years go by. I have my son, Jordan, who's now, at the time we went back and visited them, he was probably eight. Uh, Sam was like three. And we went over there to have a crawdad feast with our cousin Jojo and cousin Philip. I was out of town? Yeah, you didn't, you didn't show up. <laughs> my mom went. And it was like... Who sent out the invite? It was when our grandma died. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were like, we should get together and have a crawdad feast like we used to. And it was not as fun as I remembered it. <laughs> <laughs> my, co my cousin Jojo owned a, owned a porta potty business and his trailer was there and he was ordering the kids not to climb on it because there was poo all over it. Kids still climbed on it. My kids didn't. We, um, there were like this little baby laying in a crib in a, a playpen outside with like 20 naked dirty Barbies in it <laughs> and he Phil, it was Philip's son so he took it out was feeding it beer uh, just what about the bucket the one that they told Jordan to reach in there was a crawdad bucket <laughs> that had live crawdads and he was like, go ahead and reach in there, Jordan. You're a fart. You could <laughs> handle it. It was like black muddy water. It was can, black muddy. You like, couldn't see anything. And Jordan's like afraid to. And Philip took one out and put it on his nipple and it pinched it. And I was like, dude, this guy's insane. On, on Jordan's nipple? No, on oh. his own. <laughs> Philip's nipple. And Sam was walking. He walked in there to Uncle Joey's house, which he, he passed away now. So it was JoJo's house. And my, our uncle Russell, who used to be very good at doing the panther walk, <laughs> was now strung out, said, hi there, little man, and waved his hand at Sam, and Sam was like terrified. <laughs> <laughs> it was just such a, a more rundown house. The bear skin still on the wall, all decrepit looking. They had uh, stairs going up and down in the living room to go to the upstairs. Those were all taken out. So it was just like this big hole in the roof. It was just so depressing. So my wife was like, I think we should take the baby. <laughs> I was like, we're not taking no baby. What baby? The one in the crib? Yeah. She wanted to take it. She was like, we should at least call CPS. I was like, you can do what you want. <laughs> yeah. This is my family. <laughs> you can't call CPS on family. <laughs> No, I <laughs> I just didn't want to take the baby. You're not one of us. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> and start throwing crawdads at her <laughs> from the bucket. And then eel flies out. You're like, where the fuck did this come from? <laughs> Get in the bucket. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, Jordan, put your hand in there now. <laughs> I just throw them in it and close it. <laughs> Terrified for life. <laughs> so that was a bad experience. Um, there weren't any funny stories about taking Josh there. There were, but they're not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to cut that out. Okay, so <laughs> let's flash forward a few years later when I, I remember Josh being all hard, like I could handle it. Wasn't he hecka scared? <laughs> So we were going to cut this out. We'll just talk about it briefly. Uh, we took our friend Josh over there one you day. You did. 
Oh, it was just me. It was just you. I oh, think. That's the, so I took Josh over there, and he was like, "I was like, I don't know if you want to go over there. They're pretty, you know, rough. rough. Yeah. They're rough." He's like, "No, I can handle it." Because he was a he was a, a street kid from Roseville, so you know he was heck of hard. Yeah. So he uh, we took him over there, and he <laughs> you took him over there. I took him over there. And we got out of the car, and he was, like, looking around at his surroundings, like, pulling up his pants, like, hesitating, like, if he wanted to go in. And that was a nervous twitch he had, always pulling at his pants. Oh, was it? Yeah. So we we walked in, and they were like, oh, what are you doing here, Bradley Brandon? (laughs) (laughs) They didn't know which one it was. Oh, I just thought they were so strung out, they thought both of us was there. (laughs) They're seeing devil. <laughs> and uh, who was there? It was JoJo, Philip, and Russell. And you, you just showed up unannounced. Yeah. Oh man. Did you at first comb the street to see if you could see Uncle Mousy walking yeah. the streets off? So no one, no one, of course, had a shirt on. <laughs> um, I took him over there, and you know they, they said some crude jokes to him and shook him up a little bit and when we left he was like man they are pretty rough how was, how oh, long did you stay there like 15 minutes <laughs> he was all like scared and terrified i was like i told you we shouldn't have went so a couple of years ago me and brandon hear that jojo is back on drugs and how we hear this is jojo got my number from someone I think from when my grandma died he had my phone number and he got you know strung out on drugs calling me listen cuz I need to borrow two hundred dollars from you I'm so I'm in a deep dark place right now I can't even jack myself off anymore I was just like oh man why is he telling me this and was it like 11 o'clock at night yeah it was it was late and then I was like okay I could I didn't want to tell him no, and I wanted to avoid confrontation, so I said, okay, I get paid Friday. Why don't you give me a call at my new phone number? And I gave him Brandon's phone number. <laughs> I just want to know what was going through your head. Like, why not make up a fake number? Obviously, he called my number because then he he would, it would be the wrong number, and then he'd call the old number back. And then you just don't pick up because you recognize I him. I guess. But, of course, it was at night, so you weren't thinking. I wasn't thinking clearly. So I gave him Brandon's phone number, and he called Brandon. Like I think. like at 2 o'clock in the morning, like that <laughs> same friggin' night. And I was like, who is this? He's like, remember, I just talked to you. It's Joe. I was like, oh, that motherfucker. <laughs> so I called Brandon. I was like, you, get a, you gave him my number? Because they're like, yeah, you gave me your new number, remember? Yeah, so I gave him the number and pawned it off on him. Uh few months go by and I'm like look Brandon he's probably still got that Wolverine number one comic book he had a, a lot of nice comics he had heck of good comics um, why don't we just drop by get $20 and see what we could get for this $20 because you know he's got to be desperate he wants drug money We'll say, hey, we'll take a few things off you for twenty dollars, and you know he would have gave us whatever he had. And my and my response to that was, no, I do not want to go. So then you tricked me. You're like, all right, let's go to lunch. So we went to Fuji, the best sushi buffet on the earth. Everything's made fresh for you, gorge. And then on the way back, after some treasure hunting, Brad starts making his way off the exit. <laughs> I was like, why are we getting off here? <laughs> and I said, let's go to JoJo's house. <laughs> And you were like, no, but I was already off the freeway. Yeah. So we show up there and we're like, hey, cuz. No, we don't We don't know where he lives. Oh, you yeah, have to find right. out where he lives. So we get off freeway and we don't know where he lives. So I'm like, they've got to live down this street here. Uh, 22nd, just a few things, a few streets over. So I start walking the streets. I see this yard cell. I'm like, hey, do you know where Philip lives? Philip and JoJo? And this one girl goes, yeah, they live right down the street. I was like, look at that. Come to find out it was, that was Philip's girlfriend having a yard sale. Yeah. <laughs> so we walk down the street and we, we show up and we're like, hey, cuz, what's going on? <laughs> it's like, you ever see like those movies where 
you like open up a door and like the people look at you with this like they've never seen the sunlight in fifty thousand years. <laughs> That's what it looks like. An old decrepit te- Texas chainsaw house. Like I don't know I don't know how it passed coding regulations, but it's just like it was it was horrible, dank, dark. So like here, have a seat, moving like dishes off the couch so we have room to sit. And like I didn't want to sit down because I would have thought that I would have caught lice. Yeah, you didn't let me sit down. Didn't even warn me about the head lice they probably had. <laughs> but thank goodness I didn't get any. Yeah, and then uh, after we left, you, you're, I was like, "Why'd you sit down? You know they have lice." And you're like, oh. <laughs> "No, I didn't know that. I didn't keep up with the times. I didn't know." So we're in the house scoping it out. Like, hey Jojo, you got any more of them comic books? No, I I got them in storage. I think someone stole them. You know, he pawned them, <laughs> or he just left them in storage and defaulted on the bill, and someone else got them. Yeah. So we're sitting there, we're like, okay, there's nothing here. There's no games, no treasure. We just need a split. And what about what's the kid's name? Scotty. What was Jojo? He called him a fag or something. Yeah. And then his his Scotty. Jojo has a son named Scotty uh, with this girl named Trina, his wife, or I guess uh, domestic partner. I think she came with, he, Scotty came with the package. Yeah. And bark. Yeah. So I don't know why Jojo just kept calling him a little fag and faggot. Or no, he was cussing and then like she's like, don't say those words. My son's going to repeat it. And they're like, say faggot. <laughs> <laughs> and the kid was like, he was like, seven or eight or he might have been like an oversized kid he probably was like four or five built like an eight or nine year old and uh he was like faggot and then for some reason trina got all upset and worried over that and not worried about the meth mites that were crawling on her face (laughs) (laughs) like she kept picking at her face yeah oh man like she yeah you have bigger things to worry about than your son (laughs) saying a few bad words Just by looking around here, you could see, like, health code violations <laughs> everywhere. She, she still had standards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about the, the frogs that were hopping around in the corner of the house. <laughs> but, but, but you have my son say a bad word, it's over. But, yeah, we, we just like, okay, this is so depressing. We need to split. And I looked at Brad like, you need to get us the fuck out of yeah. here. And I saw that look. I was like, we need to go. So instead of just saying, okay, we'll see you later, I, I feigned a phone call from my mom and so that I pretended that she called and she was stranded on the freeway and I, I pretend answered my phone and I was like, hello? Oh, hi, mom. What? You're stuck on the freeway? Oh, no. You have a flat tire? You have a flat tire? Well, me and Brandon's out here at Phillip's house. Yeah? Okay. Oh, you're just on 80? Okay. Yeah, we'll be right there to fix your tire. Okay, guys, we need to go. Yeah, so I get, and then we were out of there. Yeah, so that treasure hunting experience was a fail. Yeah, we really didn't find too much other than, uh, some lice and some meth mite and some frogs in the corner just hopping around and we didn't find standards. <laughs> So that'll do it for this episode of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. Happy hunting.